Good morning, children, and all the viewers who are watching this DCEB Surya Pet Khamam Bioscience online class. I am Kausaranjum, working as TGT Science in TSMS Imam Pet Village, Surya Pet Mandalayan District. Today, I am here to present you the topic female reproductive system. So, in previous class, you have learned about male reproductive system. Today, I'll present you the female reproductive system. So at first, I want to uh, display you the slide which shows the learning outcomes. When I finish my class, what the learning, what will be the learning outcomes? So once all of you see these children here, after my class, when you listen this class, you can come to know about different parts in female reproductive system. You can explain how ovum is formed and how ovum is released. And you can differentiate the changes during menstruation and fertilization. You can show the importance of various membranes around embryo. And you can able to answer a few questions like, what is placenta? And what is the role of placenta in pregnancy? And finally, you can answer this question, what is gestation period? I hope you have understood what are the learning outcomes. So let's enter into the main topic that is female reproductive system. So here uh, you can see a figure. This is the part which is called as female reproductive system. When we call a system means when few parts are connected to each other to bring out a function then that all the parts together, together it is called as a system. So here, all these parts are connected to each other and they'll bring out a similar single function. So it is called a reproduction. So it is called as a reproductive system. And as it is present in the females, it is called as female reproductive system. Okay, so here, uh, what are the parts you can see in the female reproductive system are, you can see two ball-like structures situated on either side of this uh, bag-like structure. These two ball-like structures are called as ovaries, which are in pair. One is situated at the right side and other is situated towards the left side. And a pair of tubes are present on either side of this uh, central part. These two tube-like structures are called as fallopian tubes. These are also in pair, okay? And this central bag-like structure is called as uterus. And uh, this lower part is called as vagina. And along with this all, there will be mammary glands, which are also a part of female reproductive system. So female reproductive system totally involves five, five uh, parts children. The first, a pair, uh, two ovaries are present on either side of the uterus. A pair of fallopian tubes are present attached to the uterus and uh, uh, adjacent to the ovaries. And there will be one centrally located uterus and uh, there will be vagina, which is located inferior to the uterus. And there will also be the mammary glands which are not uh, uh, connected to the uh, this uh, total reproductive system, but those are also a part of reproductive system. I hope you have understood what parts are involved in the female reproductive system. Now we will start uh, with the, uh, our explanation with the part called as ovaries, uh, which are the female sex organs. So here I, I have shown you these ball-like structures uh, which are on either side of the uterus. These are the ovaries. Ovaries are situated in the abdominal cavity of the females. These are two in number. And uh, here, this is the uh, transverse section of the ovaries, which exhibits what, uh, what is there inside it. So if you see the inside the ovary, there will be the bubble-like structures. So these bubble-like structures are nothing but the follicles. These follicles can also be called as graphene follicles. Okay, 
So inside the ovaries, there will be the bubble-like structures, bubble-like cells will be there. Those are called as follicles. Follicles can also be called as graphene follicles. So what is the importance of graphene follicles means? Inside the graphene follicles, uh, you can see these red colored dot stru dotted structures. These are the female sex cells, which are called as egg or ovum. Okay, so inside these graphene follicles, the X will be formed. And when these, graph when these X are matured, then the graphene follicles will blast. Okay, so here you can see the slowly the um, development of the uh, cells. Slowly the cells are uh, developing and, uh, and here this is the graphene follicle increased in size and here Finally, the graphene follicle comes to the surface of the ovary and will release the ovum to outside. So here, after releasing of ovum from the graphene follicle, the graphene follicle turns into this type structure, which is called as corpus luteum. Okay, so first, at first what happens, the X will be formed inside these bubble-like cells called as graphene follicles or simply follicles. When these eggs will grow, start, started to grow, the follicle size increases. And when the egg gets matured, the egg or ovum will be released outside of the ovary, making the follicle to turn into this flower-like structure, which is called as corpus luteum. Later, it gets uh, degenerated. Okay, so this is a continuous formation. Uh, you know that in eighth standard you have learned how the menstru what is the menstruation and how the uh, or how the ovulation occurs. Uh, it is a regular. Uh, it is a cyclic process, and uh, in, uh, for every twenty eight days, an, an ovum is released from the ovaries. So how the ovum is formed means the ovum is formed by the cell division called as meiosis. Okay. Uh, so here this is the uh, this is how the ovum gets. Uh, uh, matured inside the follicles and uh, when the ovum is matured it is released out i hope you have understood this so here the release of ovum from follicles is called as ovulation now coming to the ovaries see children there are two ovaries one is at the right side and other is the left side of the uterus and uh, if in the first month the right side of the ovary releases the ovum uh, in the next month the left side of the ovary releases the ovum so alternately the ovaries take the charge of releasing the ova ovum okay so and every, in every month only single ovum is released you have to remember this and the process of releasing of ovum from the follicles is called as ovulation okay next next we will move to the second uh, part which is uh, which is uh, the second part of the female reproductive system though that is the fallopian tubes fallopian tubes can also be called as ov ducts Okay, so here, this is the ovary and the tubes, these tubes are called as fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes can also be called as oviduct. This fallopian tube e, e, e lies adjacent beside the ovaries and are attached to the thick central bag-like structure, which is called as uterus. So here, what is the importance of oviduct? Duct in the sense tube, OV in the sense which collects the ovum. This is the tube which collects the ovum released from the ovaries. When the ovum is released into the body cavity, then the ovum is sucked or taken by these, uh, by this widened part of the fallopian tube and the ovum enters into the fallopian tube. In this fallopian tube only, the ovum stays Okay, for a few days, uh, if the sperm comes, then the ovum combined with the sperm and it results in the formation of zygote. And uh, this process is called as fertilization. So here children, what are the fallopian tubes? Fallopian tubes are two in number attached on either side of the uterus. Fallopian tubes can also be called as oviducts, ovum, which call the tubes which collect the ovum. So when the ovary releases the ovum, then the ovum is taken by the fallopian tubes. The ovum is, uh, stays in the fallopian tube till the sperm comes. Then the sperm meets with the ovum, resulting in the formation of zygote, which is called as fertilization. If the sperm does not come, then what happens? The ovum gets degenerated. Then 
it will come out which is called as menstruation so fertilization menstruation both the occurs depending upon the situation okay i hope you have understood what is fallopian tube the next part of the female reproductive system is the uterus which is the most important part see here uh, these are the two ovaries and these are the two fallopian tubes and this central part which is a thick muscular bag like structure it is called as uterus so it is situated in the abdominal region and it is in the shape of pear fruit if you see here inverted pear fruit this is the pear fruit if this widened part goes up then it will appear like the your female uterus so here uh, uterus is a thick muscular inverted pear shaped structure and the uterus has three layers see this internal inner layer is called as endometrium this middle layer is called as myometrium and the outer layer is called as perimetrium there are the three layers uh, three layers of found in the uterus and see here children uh, this is the inner layer which is the most important one this the, the thickness of the endometrium increases as soon as the menstru as soon after the menstruation to receive zygote here what i said when the ovaries release the ovum the ovum is taken by the oviduct so here the ovum stays in the oviduct till the sperm meets when the sperm meets it becomes zygote so slowly the zygote what happens it divides redivides and increases in size and increases in number so when and the weight of that also increases so later where the uh, growth of that zygote occurs in the sense in this bag like structure which is called as uterus in telugu it is called as garbhashayam so the child the fetus grows in the uterus so to carry that fetus to carry the fetus uh, up to 9 months how the uterus should be the uterus should be very thick isn't it and it should so it should, it should be very thick so what it should do now uh, means it should go on adding the extra layers so that it can become thick to bear, bear that fetus so here how the uh, it increases its thickness means yeah, i said the inner layer is called as endometrium this endometrium goes on increasing in its thickness so why it goes on increasing in the sense uh, it has to receive the zygote if the zygote comes and if the zygote uh, zygote later turns to embryo if that embryo comes and fix in this uterus the endometrium must be thick so it will go on increasing its thickness okay for example if uh, the zygote is not formed then what happens in the sense uh the the ovum will get disintegrated and uh, all this endometrium the layers will get disintegrated will will come out of the body of the female which is called as a menstruation okay so here uh see children if fertilization if fertilization does not occur then the endometrium disintegrates and flows out as menstrual fluid and if the fertilization occurs then the thickness of the endometrium increases to receive the zygote so what is the major function of the endometrium is to board that uh, zygote is the first thing to provide nourishment is the second thing and also it collects the wastes of the embryo and it disposes out so endometrium is the most important layer of the uterus so here uterus what is uterus uterus is a thick muscular bag like structure which is one in number centrally located okay uh, so here it has three layers the outer layer is perimetrium uh, middle layer is myometrium and the inner layer is endometrium among these three the endometrium plays a major role uh, it uh, increases in its uh, uh, thickness in order to receive the zygote okay Uh, and it also provides a nourishment to the embryo it disposes the waste of the embryo i hope you have understood what is uterus next we will move further see here children here this is the ovary when the ovum when the ovary releases the ovum the ovum is taken by this tube like structure called as oviduct and here 
this ovum combines with the sperm and this is called as fertilization. When the fertilization occurs, it becomes zygote. Zygote is one, okay. Now this zygote divide and form two cell structure and this two cell structure again divide and form four cell stage, four cell structure. Again, this four cell, uh, cell structure divides to form eight cell stage, which is called as blastomia. Later, these, the, the division goes on. And uh, when it reaches to the stage of blastocyst, then that blastocyst come into, uh, slowly it comes from the fallopian tube to downward into the uterus and gets fixed or gets embedded into the soft tissue of the uterus. Okay, so when the ovary releases the ovum, the ovum is taken by the fallopian tube and the, the division goes on and finally it reaches to the uh, uterus and gets embedded into the walls of the uterus. So this fixing of uh, uh, blastocyst, which is the embryo into the uterus is called as, it is called as implantation. Implantation means fixing of uh, embryo into the uterine wall. It is called as implantation. Okay. So I hope you have understood what is, how the fertilization occurs and how the zygote is formed and how the zygote division occurs. So we will move further. Now see here, children, uh, when the embryo is formed, I mean blastomia, blastomia changes to blastocyst. Uh, so it is called as embryo. So some of the cells of the embryo changes into four layers. Okay, few cells of embryo develops into uh, some membranes, some layers of the uh, embryo, which the, there are four membranes which are present around the embryo. That is one is chorion, second is amnion, third, allantois or allantoin sac, fourth, yolk sac. So there are totally four layers present around the embryo. How these four layers are formed means from few of the cells of embryo. Now in further slides, we will see what is chorion, what is its function, what is amnion, and or what all the other membranes are and what are their functions. So let's move to the outermost layer of the embryo, which is called as chorion. You can see here, children, this is the fetus. We can call it as embryo for, uh, for, for, me, for uh, present. Uh, it is an embryo. Uh, around this embryo, they, I said there will be the four layers, isn't it? So here the outermost layer is the chorion. So the outermost layer is the chorion. Here you can see. So this is the outermost layer. It is the chorion. Uh, what is the what is the function of the chorion? Is uh, slowly from the from the outermost layer chorion, uh, some finger-like structures arises. These finger-like structures grows in size and enters into uterine wall. Okay, and it forms the connection in between the mother and the fetus. Have you understood? The outermost layer is called as chorion. From the chorion, some finger-like structures arises and enters into the uterine wall. And it forms a connection in between the mother and the fetus. So what is that connection? What it, the finger-like the finger -like projections are called means these forms a special important layer, which is called as placenta. So these projections along with the uterine tissue makes the placenta. So placenta is the membrane which is formed by the membrane of the fetus and also the membrane of the mother. So it both, both the uh, embryo and the uh, mother combinedly forms the placenta. So what is the role of placenta means? Placenta supplies the blood from mother to the fetus. So actually, what is fetus? So from then first I said zygote, later I said embryo. Now I'm saying fetus. So what is the difference in the sense when the sperm combined with the ovum, it forms zygote. Zygote divide and re-divide and it form group of cells, which is called as embryo. Embryo later it turns to fetus, which we call from the third month of the pregnancy. That is 12 weeks of pregnancy. After the pregnancy, after 12 weeks of pregnancy, we cannot call it as embryo. We call it as fetus. Till the delivery, it can be called as fetus only. 
so the fetus gets all its nutrients all the oxygen required and uh, fetus release uh, for the carbon dioxide and the, the fetus what the waste is produced it is all exchange in between the mother and the uh, fetus is brought out by the connection uh, the connecting layer which is called as placenta so the here the i said the blood from mother is passed to the fetus isn't it by means of the placenta so the blood contains uh, dissolved oxygen and it contains all the required nutrients so that when the blood comes from the mother to the fetus automatically the blood brings the oxygen and also the nutrients from the mother to the fetus and collects the carbon dioxide and also collects the waste from the fetus okay so placenta is formed around 12 weeks of pregnancy i said after the pregnancy after the third month uh, the embryo is called as fetus and when the placenta is formed means around 12 weeks that means the same after the three months of the pregnancy placenta is formed placenta has one more function it protects the uh, embryo it protects the fetus by not allowing the harmful substances from mother's body okay so i hope you have understood what is chorion chorion is the outermost layer of the embryo it helps in the formation of placenta later the function is taken by the placenta now we will move to the second membrane that is amnion that is amniotic sac you can see here children inside there is a fetus and around the fetus there is a thin membrane this membrane is called as amniotic sac so inside this membrane a liquid is filled this is called as amniotic fluid which is called as ummu neeru in telugu so this liquid is most important why it is important in the sense amniotic liquid amniotic fluid keeps the fetus moist and it also uh, protects the fetus from mechanical jerks when the mother moves when the mother sit stand or sometimes she she, she, she runs so at that time some uh, mechanical jerks are passed to the fetus so the, those jerks will be absorbed by the uh, amniotic fluid and it will protect the fetus without uh, from the injury so here have you understood so amnion is the second membrane which is present around the fetus uh, and this gap in between the fetus and the membrane is filled with a liquid which is called as amniotic fluid the function of amniotic fluid is to keep the embryo moist and also to protect the embryo from the minor mechanical jerks minor not the heavy if major accidents occurs it cannot protect the fetus okay i hope you have understood about the second layer also now we will move to the third layer that is called as allantois or it can also be called as allantoic sac so actually this is also one of the membranes uh, what is its major function is not yet known but how it is useful means uh, it it contains some uh, membranes some blood vessels so a few blood vessels from the allantois forms the umbilical cord so what is the umbilical cord here you can see here children this white color cord which is uh, the connection between the mother and the fetus when the baby is born there will be a cord in between the mother and the fetus uh, that cord will be later be uh, it is uh, cut to separate the fetus from the mother so what is the use of this cord in the sense of supplying of food from mother to the child so here uh, this umbilical cord is made up of three blood vessels so in these blood vessels few one of the blood vessel is uh, from the allantoic membrane from the allantoic membrane okay i have you, i hope you have understood about the third membrane that is the allantois now we will move to the fourth membrane that is a yolk sac uh, you are familiar with this word yolk when you see the egg inside the egg there will be yellow color um, circular part and the white color liquid that yellow color circular part is called as yolk and that white color part is called as al albumin isn't it so here uh, if you see here this yolk sac this is the embryo or the fetus and uh, on here connected to this there will be one sac like structure uh, which is yellow in color 
why this is yellow in the sense that there will be yellow color fluid inside this which is called as yolk and this layer is called as yolk sac so it has no importance in the mammals so we all are the mammals it has no importance whereas in the birds it serves as the food for the growth of the embryo but he, here it does not have any such importance because we are viviparous the fetus is growing inside the mother's body so the nutrients are supplied by the mother's body whereas in oviparous animals when the egg is laid out there will be no connection from mother to the uh, egg isn't it so inside the embryo then for the growth of the embryo the yolk serves as the food for the growth of the embryo but here inside uh, in the viviparous uh, the, um, uh, the fetus is grown inside the mother so this yolk has no role in mammals okay so here uh, pregnancy lasts for nine months uh, from the inception to the birth inception in the sense uh, from the combination or from the fusion of a zygote, from the fusion of sperm and ovum, it forms a zygote. This is called as inception of the pregnancy. From the inception to the delivery, uh, what is the time period? Means it is the nine months. So this time period is called as a gestation period. Okay. So gestation period means the time taken by the uh, zygote, the time taken by the fetus to grow fully. Okay. Uh, from the formation to birth. So it is nine months in the human beings. I hope you have understood uh, about this also. Uh, now we will move to the final thing that is the evaluation part. So till now what we have learned children, we have learned what are the parts involved in the female reproductive system? What are the different layers of the uh, embryo? What is the role of placenta? What are the roles? What is the role of different layers of the embryo so now it is a evaluation part pay concentration from here see here so the first question is name the parts which make female reproductive system so what are the parts which are present in the female reproductive system in the first a pair of ovaries a pair of fallopian tubes a centrally located uh, uterus is present mm, vagina and also the mammary glands are also the integral part of the female reproductive system next the second one is uh, name the female reproductive organ and the female sex cell. What is the female reproductive organ? It is the ovary. What is the female sex cell here? This is the ovum, which can also be called as egg. Define, third question, define ovulation. Ovulation means process of releasing of ovum from the follicle is called as ovulation. Next, write about the importance of placenta. Placenta is the layer which is formed by both the uh, fetal membrane and also the uterine wall that is the mother and the fetus so it is the most important membrane which is a connection in between the mother and the fetus it is formed after the three weeks of the pregnancy uh, so it is it supplies the blood from mother to the fetus this blood has dissolved oxygen nutrients uh, so by the process of diffusion it supplies the oxygen and nutrients and also collects the carbon dioxide and wastage from the fetus. So it is a most important part of both for the fetus as well as the mother. It helps in the growth of the uh, fetus. Next, name the different membranes present around uh, embryo and write their importance in the development of embryo. So there are the three membranes. One is chorion. Uh, sorry, there are uh, um, four membranes. One is chorion. Second is amnion. Uh, third, allantois. And fourth is a yolk sac, and you have to write its importance. A chorion helps in the formation of placenta. Um, Allantois, uh, it is the second part which forms the, uh, sorry, it's a amnion is the second layer which forms the amniotic sac filled with the amniotic fluid. And third is the allantois, which helps in the formation of umbilical cord and a yolk sac. It is the fourth one. It has no importance, but it is present. But in the oviparous animals, it has a great importance. And the last two question is, what is gestation period? Uh, that period, the time taken by the zygote to fully grow into the, to fully grow, uh, it is called as a gestation period, the time taken by the uh, fetus to grow fully from the inception of uh, the pregnancy to the birth. The, the time is called as a gestation period and it is nine months in the mammals. 
Okay, I hope you have understood today's lesson. Uh, try to do all these questions on your own and get it evaluated from your teachers. Okay, thank you.